Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to my Gangs of the Shires video guide. Gangs of the Shires is a graphical reskin of an event we got a couple of times already, which used to be called Naval Warfare. Absolutely nothing has changed except for the look, and that's a good thing because Naval Warfare is considered as one of the best events of the game. The reason is pretty simple, it has a very good return on investment for your gems, and the shop is stacked with a lot of great options to choose from. This event may look complicated but it's not. You just have to keep one little thing in mind, and you will be good to go, this thing is called Royal Charter. The number of Royal Charters you will be able to collect during the week will determine whether or not you'll go home with a truckload of rewards. Every relevant reward from the shop asks for a certain amount of Royal Charters and Feudal Contracts, so anything we do will always be dictated by the same following line, how does that help us get more Royal Charters? To fully grasp why your gems have a great return on investment, we have to look at both the exchange shop and the limited offers packs. An event hero or maiden fragment costs one charter and two contracts. The first limited pack will give you one charter and five contracts for 288 gems, but also five knives and 500 ducats. The value of a single knife is 50 gems if you want to buy it from the landlord extortion tab. Well it's actually 45 since we have a 10 for the cost of 9 discount. 45 times 5 equals 225 gems. Does that mean you get one charter and five contracts, which can then be turned into one hero or maiden fragment, for 63 gems? Yes, it's a way to see it and needless to say, it's an incredible deal. Be careful though, because we still have to determine the actual value of a knife. In other words, can this knife be turned into something worth the 45 gems you invested? The other 288 pack isn't good because it does not contain any charter, so you simply forget it exists. If we look at the other three options, one thing stands out, the 2000 pack gives you 100 contracts, meaning that if you buy one or more, you most likely will never have to worry about contract shortage ever again. You also get 4 charters, 10 knives and 1500 ducats. This pack is very good and is the next best thing after the first 288 pack. Unlike the 588 and 1088 ones, everything in the 2000 pack is valuable and will have some kind of utility. Back to the exchange shop. Now if we look at hero or maiden skins, we can see they cost 25 charters and 150 contracts, or 20 charters and 200 contracts for Ragnar and his maiden. Usually a skin is priced the same as 50 fragments. Here we see that we need half the charters we would spend to get 50 fragments, but more contracts. For Ragnar, it's even less than half. Thanks to the 2000 pack, we know that contracts are not an issue if we ever need some. So all we really have to care about is getting these charters, and since we need so few compared to fragments, we can deduce that skins are a pretty good deal in this event. The same reasoning applies to Maiden or Zodiac chests. They are a terrific option, because we don't need many charters to get them. See how the Spear of Justice, Elizabeth's token, asks for 6 charters and 50 contracts? Well the Heroic Maiden chest, which can then be converted into 10 Elizabeth tokens, costs 30 charters and 300 contracts. You aim for the chest, obviously, as it's half-priced. Zodiac chests are even cheaper but be aware, two Zodiac heroes and maidens are not available in those, Michelangelo, Blake Boom, Doris and Annie Elvita. To sum this first part up, your ability to spend gems on 288 and 2000 packs will have a great impact of what you will buy from the exchange shop at the end of the week. To illustrate that, I'll use a forgotten account I own that somehow has gems on it. I started all by buying both 288 packs, and all 5 2000 packs. It costed me 10.5k gems, but I get 925 back from the limited time quest so I spent 9591 gems here. I already have 22 charters and billions of contracts. I then will use some of the knives I got, and what interests me here is the 25 knives daily tier because it will give me one charter. Since I'm getting 6 knives back as well, I can safely use 27 of them to 10 draw 3 times. Out of these I got one more charter and a faith fragment. Getting that many ducats from packs helps me to clear all the daily collect quests from the battle screen, as well as some of the accumulative ones. I can also safely upgrade my clan to level 2. So far, I already have 29 charters, so it's a guaranteed heroic maiden chest because I will get some more charters from the extortion tab the following day. It's at least 3 more coming so if I just stop there, I'll end up with 32. For 9591 gems, I've secured an heroic maiden chest which contains 10 tokens of the heroic maiden of my choice, putting the token cost at 959 gems each. 
I don't think there is another event in this game that would allow me to trade so few gems for a token. Also remember that we got 7 Ragnar fragments in the process, 1 faith from drawing, and 2 more charters banked up. And we haven't even started to play the battle game yet. We didn't do anything fancy either, we just spent gems. And no money involved. Speaking of which, let's just tackle money packs real quick. It's easy if you keep the simple thing in mind, which is royal charters. The $1 pack has very good value with 2 royal charters and 10 knives as a bonus, all the others suck real hard. If you're not AF2P player, buying the two $1 packs available each day will cost you $14 and will grant you a whopping 33 charters if you factor in the top-up quests, 140 draws from knives and a good amount of ducats. $14 for an heroic maiden chest, an event hero or maiden skin with many leftover, or at the very least 33 event hero or maiden fragments? Yes, please. Honestly this has to be one of the best ROI you can make for your bucks in the whole game. With all that out of the way, we have one more thing to cover, which is the battle playground. For once, we have a couple of different strategies we can opt for, and that makes it interesting. First, we can choose to stay under protection forever if we don't upgrade our clan to level 3 and beyond. Staying level 2 the whole event is actually a valid strategy. We get 1440 ducats a day doing so, and buying the two 288 packs is enough to get two charters from the daily collect ducats quest. At the end of the week, we will have a hefty pile of ducats, enabling two options. We can either spend it all on the last day to upgrade our clan as high as possible and most likely score level 6 tier rewards for some Ragnar fragments, maybe even level 8 if we bought more packs. Or we can leave our ducats untouched and play the individual and alliance rankings. These rankings are based on the amount of ducats you have at the end of the timer, so you can't have both worlds. The shape of rankings close to the end should help you to take the good decision here, which also depends if you're chasing for Ragnar fragments or not. I like this strategy a lot because it's safe and allows you to do things other than playing the game for the week. The only downside I see, and it's a rather big one, is that you miss the opportunity to collect even more charters. You can't score any of the attack quests, and you don't get to plunder others for more chances at charters. It also lacks the ambition to ever get your clan to high levels, and if Ragnar fragments are your priority, it's another big downside. Another option is to break the protective bubble as soon as possible, upgrade your clan and battle for glory. Back to our test account. We're just going to do that with all the ducats we collected from packs. We're now at risk of being sunk and thus not collecting ducats. But we can also attack, at least 10 times a day to score the charter from the daily quest. We're looking for some low life clans. We start by kicking this guy, losing all our HP along the way. We're now in a very common position, that is, being dead. We can now abuse this position by resurrecting but don't you ever spend more than 100 gold to do so, and here's why. It's enough to launch another attack, but we will only lose 100 HP in the process, while inflicting full damage to our target. We get sunk back, but we can repeat the process as many times as we want here. Had we repaired our clan for more than 100 ducats, we would have lost more HP when we attacked, so it's just best to do that while we are doing our attacks. You notice that every time we resurrect, we get a protective bubble for an hour, but can break it immediately to attack. The absolute best way to play is then to resurrect for 100 ducats and wait for 59 minutes before launching our next attack. During that time, your clan will collect ducats from being alive. Here we are level 6, so we're collecting at a rate of 156 ducats an hour. But the game does not grant your income every hour, but rather every 5 minutes. Here we will get 13 ducats every 5 minutes. So if we wait for 55 minutes, we will collect 143 ducats, which is more than the resurrect cost of 100. By doing so, not only resurrecting and attacking doesn't cost us a thing, but we're even able to grow our ducats count without being at risk of being plundered since we have that bubble. Once it's about to break, you sink yourself, resurrect and get back into the bubble again. The problem, of course, is that it asks us to log in a lot and to spend a lot of time playing. Rather difficult if we have a job or a life, or if we want to sleep, but it's just the best way to play the event. Now say we know we won't be able to play for an extended period of time, for example because we go to bed. We have to choose if we resurrect and hope to stay alive to collect ducats, or simply if we stay dead. If we go for the resurrect line, we want to align it, if possible, with the game life timer. We want the game life timer to end while we're still under our protective bubble as this may stop others from attacking us if we have 600 HP rather than 100. 
It probably won't stop someone but we might as well try that. What we're gambling by resurrecting is that the time alive and collecting will compensate the loss we will endure when we get sunk. Be more inclined to try that when your ducats count as low to not be a too tempting target. And finally, if you plan on spending heavy gems on limited packs, you can opt for an in-between strategy. That is, you stay at level 2 for 3 or 4 days, and then break the bubble and start attacking. The extra benefit you'll get for waiting a little bit is that you'll compete and rank well on daily gold rankings, scoring a little extra ducats on days you stayed level 2. In the end, breaking the protective bubble is mandatory if you want to chase for more Ragnar fragments and extra charters. You will have to commit and play regularly if you want decent results but it's a nice bonus to the good deal you already get by just spending gems and or 1 or 2 dollars a day. To sum up, Gangs of the Shires is one of the best events in the entire game, only behind Spring Adventure in my opinion. The amount of items you can get out of your gems is really good, especially if you're still interested in heroic maiden chests, zodiac chests or hero skins. So if you have gems or a little money to spend, go ahead and do it, it's a good opportunity. On top of that, gameplay is somewhat interesting, even though it asks you to log in a lot. And that's all for this event. I hope I helped you to figure things out and until next time, bye bye.